गुड मॉर्निंग चर्च लेट्स प्रे ऑल माइटी गॉड टू यू ऑल हार्ट्स आर ओपन ऑल डिजायर्स नोन एंड फ्रॉम यू नो सीक्रेट्स आर हिट क्लेंस द थॉट्स ऑफ आर हार्ट्स बाय द इंस्पिरेशन ऑफ होली स्पिरिट दैट वी मे परफेक्टली लव यू एंड वर्दली मैग्नीफाई योर होली नेम थ्रू क्राइस्ट आर लॉर्ड आ May I request the congregation to rise and join in call to worship. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. for you have exalted your name and your word above everything we will remain standing and sing hymn of commitment 301 jesus keep me near the cross
For affirmation of faith, let's turn to Psalter number 881 for Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried, the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From him she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let's remain standing for responsive reading Psalter number 807, led by Miss Madhvi. Psalm 89, Psalter number 807. I will sing of you your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. Your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is firm as the heavens. You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Then you spoke in a vision to your faithfulness one and said, I have found David, my servant, with my holy all I have anointed him. The enemy shall not outwit him, the wicked shall not humble him. My faithfulness and my steadfast love shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall cry to me, you, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. And I will make him the firstborn, the highest of kings of earth. My steadfast love I will keep for him forever, and my covenant will stand firm for him. I will establish his land forever, and his throne as the days of the heavens. If his children forsake my law, and do not walk according to the audience. If they violate my statutes and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their transactions with the road and their iniquity with the scourge. But I will not remove from him my steadfast love or be false to my faithfulness. I will not violate my covenant or alter the word that went forth for my lips. Once for all I have sown by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His line shall endure forever, his throne as long as the sun before me. Like the moon it shall be established forever, it shall stand firm while the sky is in heaven. may please be seated. I request Ms. Monamani to lead us in intercessory and Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, O Lord, 
we come and silent before you, O Lord. You are very much present today here, O Lord, in this temple, O Lord. We look to you, Lord. We gaze at your, gaze at your radiance, O Lord. It falls on us, O Lord. We see you. We are sitting. We are standing. We are sitting in the presence of you, O Lord. Lord, you are enthroned at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, O Lord. Earth is your footstool, O Lord, and we at your feet from earth, Lord, praising you, adoring you, worshipping you, because you only deserve the uh, all praise and worship, O Lord. You are holy, 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 Lord, God Almighty, O Lord. All heaven and earth you have created, Lord. All mountains, high mountains and valleys you have created. You provide food to everyone, O Lord, without any partiality, O Lord. We get every portion from you because of your grace, O Lord. We get everything, O Lord. We pray at this time and commit ourselves, O Lord, into your mighty hands, O Lord. Lord, we pray and confess our sins to thee, O Lord. All the sins we have committed from our childhood till now, O Lord. We stand before you, you are holy, you are pure, you are spotless. And we, when we look to you, we are reminded of our sinfulness, O Lord. And we all the sins we remember, O Lord, day to day what we have committed, O Lord. That gossip, O Lord, that uh, lying, O Lord, that... Uh, 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 any other things which daily, day to day we commit, O oh Lord. We grieve your spirit, O oh Lord. And we do not sometimes aware of it also, Lord. Lord, we pray for all which we have done, which we should not have done, O oh Lord. And what, Lord, we, what, Lord, we ask forgiveness for the things which we should have done, but we haven't done, O oh Lord. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Forgive us that we have... Uh, uh, we have healing, O oh Lord. Forgive us that we have salvation, O oh Lord. Lord, thank you that you died on the cross for us, O oh Lord, on our behalf, O oh Lord. We praise you, we adore you for that grace, for that redemption, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray at this time, O oh Lord, for our whole church, O oh Lord, and we ask for the forgiveness and to accept this grace which we are getting freely, O oh Lord, and the whole congregation, be crowned with the, uh, uh, our head with the salvation, O oh Lord, and we be your children, O oh Lord. We be added to the universal holy church, O oh Lord. We give ourselves into your mighty hands. We thank you, Lord, for all the things you have given, you have done for us day to day, your protection, O oh Lord, uh, the good health you have given to us, O oh Lord, and uh, uh, every materialistic things more than basic necessity, O oh Lord, you have given to us. All luxurious things you have given to us, O oh Lord. We thank you for everything you have given to us. Lord, we thank you for the freedom of uh, uh, reading your Bible, praying, privilege of praying, O oh Lord. And this, uh, thank you for this church you have given to us, O oh Lord. We can worship, we can have fellowship, O oh Lord. Thank you for uh, uh, the Bible in our language we have, and we have freedom to read it. Thank you for this, O Lord. We give ourselves at this time into your mighty hands, O Lord. We pray for this whole church, O Lord. Our needs, O Lord, our physical needs, our spiritual needs, our uh, emotional, mental needs, O Lord. We come to you because we hope in you, O Lord. You are the one who is above all, O Lord. We pray for uh, all who are present here, O oh Lord. We pray for all who who are who have not come. You could. Uh, we pray for all of them, O oh Lord, that you bless each one of us, O oh Lord. Lord, I pray for all the sicknesses we have, Lord, that uh, uh, it can be uh, uh, it can be any sicknesses like uh, um, we have. Uh, in our congregations, we may have pains and uh, we have, it can be migraine, it can be heart problems, it can be diabetes. We bring all that before your throne of grace, O oh Lord. 
you are the healer of healer you are jehovah rafa oh lord that pain you touch that past that knee pain that back pain oh lord that blockages of veins oh lord that migraine oh lord oh lord as Now Peter's mother-in-law's fever you rebuke oh lord we rebuke this all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ by sprinkling of your blood oh lord let it be healed oh lord and let it be uh, peace and rejoicing for you oh lord because you have done this let there be testimonies let there be miracles working oh lord through us and within us oh lord lord i pray for all Uh, whose birthdays are in this week, O oh Lord. I pray for Shalini Sharma. I pray for Ruchira Paul. I pray for Auntie Mohini Bambal. I pray for Neeraj Devij. I pray for Shaini Suman Kosala. I pray for uh, Tavishi Bambal, Deva Krupa, Persis Russell, Saint Pomoni Dilawa, Sanjeev Sirkar, Doctor Satish Matthew. and michel pareto and i pray for all this o oh lord name to name by name o oh lord we give them into your mighty hands o oh lord put your hand on them o oh lord bless them o oh lord thank you for all you have done in their lives till now thank you for whatever blessings you have given jobs education good parenting good family everything you have given o oh lord for which we thank you o lord we we pray for their needs o lord all needs we bring before your throne of grace o lord because you are the source of every good blessing o lord every good gift comes from father above o lord and we proclaim good gifts for this all who are celebrating their new year edition edition of new year o lord lord this year be a spiritual year of spiritual blessings for them o lord Lord, take their heart, take their mind, and bless it, O Lord, that they be yours, O Lord. They be your children, O Lord. They be growing in you. They be doing your work, O Lord. Any obstacle, any personal need, any personal request of them, O Lord, you hear their cries and fulfill it, O Lord. Lord, I pray for uh, anniversaries of Mrs. Anita and Mr. Anshu Tandon, O Lord. Lord, we bring this couple into your mighty care, O Lord. Lord, this family you bless. Lord, you have said that you would give a name to the family. Lord, let give a name to this family, O Lord. Bless this family abundantly, that they be the salt and light to this dark world, O Lord. Lord, thank you for all the blessings, family blessings and marital blessings you have given to them, O Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord, that uh, whatever the need is, you provide, O Lord. Lord we pray for blessing on this whole family oh lord and this coming year oh lord be more care of uh, the year be of more caring more loving more coming uh, uh, close to each other oh lord if there is any uh, anything any ob- uh, obstacle anything oh lord which they are facing oh lord in the name of Jesus Christ oh lord that be cured that be healed that be given to them as for their cry oh lord and you be with them oh lord and use them mightily for your kingdom oh lord lord we pray for uh, our um, our uh, uh, jacob uh, brother jacob and family and uh, brother suku and family brother um, suresh and family and all other who are giving their uh, time and giving their service to this church oh lord bless them oh lord abundantly oh lord use them mightily oh lord and we will be a good example to them as a uh, ambassadors of Christ to oh law and let their lives be shining with the love and uh, grace of Jesus Christ to oh law lord we pray for our dear pastor and family oh lord lord we give them into your mighty care we are so oh, we uh, we are so rejoicing in them for their shepherding and they are having our pastor oh lord lord whatever that needs you fulfill them oh lord and may give visions to pastor give dreams to pastor that he may have your voice oh lord he may have your uh, will and purpose for this church oh lord and let let them shepherd this church to high heights oh lord in spiritual realm oh lord and bless the uh, bless riya and khushi also 
and give, give, uh, we commit them, we give their future, their career into your mighty hands, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray for those all who are looking for life partners, O oh Lord. Lord, bless them, O oh Lord. And you have kept a life partner for each one, O oh Lord. And we pray in your mighty name that you bring that to you. They may not do any mistake in this uh, uh, choosing of life partner, but you guide them, you provide them. And they may look to you, O oh Lord, for the need, O oh Lord. They may rely on you. Their criteria be based upon you, O oh Lord, when they are seeking for their life partners, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray for all our children, our young ones, O oh Lord. We pray for Sunday school, O oh Lord. And uh, we pray for their studies, their education, and their spiritual growth, O oh Lord. And they be, uh, as they are being shepherded and molded, O oh Lord, Give us the, the wisdom, O oh Lord, give us the knowledge, give us the anointing of the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, that we can give a good example, we can teach them right ways and right path, O oh Lord. We pray for each teacher, O oh Lord, who is giving their time and the commitment, O oh Lord, uh, from this busy schedule, O oh Lord. Be with each teacher, bless each teacher, anoint each teacher with the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, that your power may flow through them, to the children, O oh Lord. Bless each one, O oh Lord. Bless the parents, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray for this church, parent, uh, any issues, parental issues, O oh Lord, and uh, marital issues, O oh Lord, and uh, any other uh, relationship issues, O oh Lord. We pray, Lord, that as Satan is uh, devouring, O oh Lord, and uh, we pray, Lord, that every issue in the name of Jesus Christ be resolved, every misunderstanding, be resolved. Every prodigal, our children will not become prodigal and rebellious, O oh Lord, but they will be obedient, O oh Lord. They will be under your grace, O oh Lord. We pray for all children if they have wa wandered from the right path, O oh Lord. We pray, Lord, you bring them back like you bring the one sheep who was lost, O oh Lord. We pray for parents cry, O oh Lord. We pray for children's cry that when they think, when they feel that they are not understood, O oh Lord. We pray that you be with them, you counsel them. You are the great counselor, O oh Lord. Bless them, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray for all the uh, Methodist churches, O oh Lord, and other churches, O oh Lord. Lord, we bring them to your throne of grace, O oh Lord. Be with those churches and their pastors and their committees, O oh Lord. And we commit our uh, church committee also, Lord, including that. O oh Lord, bless these committees and their uh, heads and uh, uh, leaders, O oh Lord. Give them your... Uh, wisdom and give them your uh, uh, purpose and uh, mission, O oh Lord, through the Holy Spirit, that they can follow it and uh, we, our church can grow and all church may grow in the way you want them to grow, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray for all corruptions, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray for the numbness and coldness we have in many churches, uh, any churches, O oh Lord. You know it, O oh Lord. Lord, help us to be warm be fiery with the fire of the holy spirit oh lord that we may give a good example in this world oh lord we may be salt and light to this world oh lord lord we pray for uh, bishop saab and uh, the family the, his family oh lord bless him oh lord as he takes all crucial decisions and actions oh lord every action every decision be from you and be guided by you, be directed by you, O oh Lord, and that we can shepherd all the churches and overall whatever functioning is there, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray for our nation, O oh Lord. Lord, we bring our nation before your throne of grace, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray for uh, prosperity of our nation, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray for the problems of poverty. Lord, we pray for problems of uh, uh, cleanliness, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray for employment, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray for farmers' issues, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray for all this, O oh Lord, that may people who are in position, O oh Lord, may do their work in the right way, truthfully, honestly, O oh Lord. We pray for the corruption, O oh Lord. We pray that the uh, country will upgrade, O oh Lord, in a good sense, O oh Lord. It will be there will be less corruption, less crime, O oh Lord. And uh, there will be more of Jesus Christ so that the crime and everything be, will be in place, O oh Lord. Bless our country, O oh Lord. And uh, uh, we give all into your mighty hands, O oh Lord. Again, O oh Lord, we surrender, we commit ourselves, O oh Lord. 
We ask all this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And the Lord's Prayer. O oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Now I invite WSAS team to lead us in praise and worship. Good morning, church. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts filled with gratitude and reverence as we gather to lift our voices and hearts in praise and worship. We ask you to bless this time of worship so that we may be uplifted and inspired by your presence. Amen. Psalm 100 verse 2 and 3 says, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pastures. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The beauty of the day is not that it is new, but that we are being made new. This is the day. by Philippians chapter 2. The passage speaks about Christ's humility and how he willingly left his throne in heaven, came to earth as a man, and sacrificed himself on the cross all because of his love for us.
The next song pictures the Lord as our strength, shield, and helper. The chorus praises Jesus as the Lamb of God who is worthy. The final goal of this and the purpose of all history and the lives of all who are in Christ and of Christ himself is that God will be all in all. In other words, God's glory will reign supreme over the entire universe. The last song is a powerful reminder that we are blessed to have Jesus in our lives. As this hymn shows, even the mere mention of his name brings thankfulness and wonder at his love for us.
It is very important to be grateful to God all the time, and especially for the ladies, women, sisters who are there with us. And the church has decided to appreciate them today for their love and for their commitment. There are some tokens for them which Sunday school children are going to distribute. Before that, I request our pastor, Varinder, to pray for the tokens faster. Shall we look to God in prayer? Heavenly Father, our Lord, gracious Lord, we bless, praise, and thank the Holy Name as we have gathered together in the Holy Sanctuary, celebrating Women's Day. Thank you, Lord, above Father God, gracious Lord, for thy creation for the beautiful creation thank you lord above father god gracious lord you have created them in thy own image and also lord above father god have given the privilege to be mother to be wife to be sister and also lord above father god serve the community serve the family and hold the family together gracious lord above lord we commit thy creation into the holy presence all the women lord above father god gracious lord we pray that you continue to be with them bless them especially lord above father god you have called all the women to serve in the kingdom extend the kingdom on this earth and have given them special privilege special power authority to serve you and lord above father god glorify the holy name in the family in the society in the church wherever they are gracious lord above lord we commit our church into the holy presence all the ladies of our church into the holy presence gracious lord above lord thank you so much for their love towards you and their ministry towards the church towards their family and also lord above father god some of them they work hard and also look after the family some of them those are fully dedicated themselves for the service of their family dedica have dedicated for their children for their husband and uh, parents in laws gracious lord above lord we seek thy blessings upon each one of them. Gracious Lord, our Lord, you strengthen our WSCS and all the women of our church. Be with them, bless them. Thank you, Lord, above Father God, for this token of love and appreciation which our Sunday school are going to distribute. Gracious Lord, our Lord, in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we bless this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I request all the children to please come forward and help in distributing this love of token. Children, please come. I request all our women to please stand up. Come forward, come forward.
that. Children go at the back side. Kushi, go at the back side. Joshua, back side, beta. That's it. On my left hand side. I have got it. Mona also. Asher? Asher, give it to Mona, auntie. She's here. Thank you, children. It was really nice to see a big smile on your faces. God bless you all. Today's worship service is led by women of our church. We have two special presentations by church ladies. First, a poem, Honoring Women, by Ms. Alan Samuel, followed by a testimony by Ms. Ethel Prashant. Miss Helen, please. Hello, everyone. Happy Women's Day to all ladies. Uh, I am grateful to coordinator of this program to uh, WSS today. Uh, after asking her a few minutes for my poem, she provided me time. Thank you. I want to speak in Hindi because the women's strength is in Hindi because my mother is in Hindi. I am a woman. 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 मैं दया हूँ, मैं प्रेम हूँ, ज़रूरत पड़ने पे मैं रूठ हूँ, मैं मदर ट्रेज़ा हूँ, अटपटली नहीं हूँ मैं, ना ही मैं तेरे अपमान की अधिकारी हूँ, बल्कि परमेश्वर की गड़ी हुई सबसे सम्मानित कलाकारी हूँ, मैं नारी हूँ। ये आजकल की नारी के लिए है, समृद्धि की ओर बढ़ती नारी, सपनों की उड़ उसके बिना नहीं चलता जीवन योगी, खुशियों की झिलमिल ममता का आंचल नारी है, आधार, समाज का विज्ञान अमूल, स्वतंत्रता की राह में उसका सहयोग, पूरा योगदान है, हैरत करता है संसार, नारी की शूरवीरता का गुणगान, उसके संघर्ष की कहानी, हर कदम पर पेड़ना, नारी की महिमा निरंतर अनुभवों का ज्ञान उच्च उत्कृष्टता की ओर बढ़ती नारी महिला दिवस की हार्दिक शुभ नारी जय नारी जैसा कि पास्टर साहब ने भी कहा कि एवरी फील्ड में आप बचपन से लेकर आखिर तक बिना माँ के या वुमन के आप कुछ नहीं कर सकते वही बात मैंने इसमें कही है थैंक यू थैंक यू मिस एलिन मिस एथल प्रशांत
Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. As I stand here, I share a very simple testimony with you all. And uh, it goes back many years. I was just flipping through the daily bread and I came across a beautiful story. And it was about the life of Dr. Eleanor Catherine Hamlin. She was born and brought up in Australia, but uh, she got educated there as a doctor. She, but she was asked to set up a hospital in Ethiopia, in Addis Ababa. It was a fistula surgery hospital. And uh, being a very simple woman, uh, she was married to uh, Dr. Uh, Reginald Hamlin and the couple took inspiration from the Gospel of Matthew 25, 40. Whatever you de do for one of these brothers of mine who are least, then you have done for me. Each morning whenever she used to enter the hospital, she would first stop by the chapel and pray and have a Bible fellowship over there. This inspired me and this really took me very deeply. And then I remembered one of the Bible stories when Jesus is, was praying and preaching the word of God and he goes to the house of Martha, Mary of Bethany and Lazarus. Martha is taking care of her uh, guests but Mary, her sister, she goes and sits at the feet of Jesus and listens to his word and listens to the gospel. So when Martha complains to Jesus, Jesus says, Martha, Martha, here Mary is more blessed because she is listening to the word of God and you are not prioritizing your tasks. First thing is you have to take your gospel, your prayer first. So every morning when I get up, it is my small prayer time. <clears throat> Just like Dr. Catherine, before she entered her hospital to see her patients, she would first go into the chapel and pray. I take all my insecurities, my fears, my my thanking to God in prayer first, I prioritize my worship and my time with Lord before I start my day. Also, another thing that really inspired me about the life of Dr. Catherine is, I'm grateful to learn about Dr. Catherine. Her powerful life exemplifies the scripture to live life in such a way that even people who actively reject God may see your good deeds and glorify. That is from 1 Peter 2, chapter 2, verse 12. I worked in a school in Delhi for many years. And this is a small incident which goes back many years that when I was going back home after work, I took a road which I usually don't take. And uh, there at the intersection, one of my uh, students met with an accident. And uh, he had a severe accident and he had fractures and a dislocated hip. And there was no one around to help. So I called up one of my colleagues and with their help, I took him to the hospital and everything was done for him. When I went to see the child in the hospital later on, he said, Madam, what would have happened if you had not come that day? Mera kya hota? Yes, true. Because that day, I had planned to take a holiday. It came naturally to me. I said, child, it is Jesus who has put me there. Hmm? 
I had applied for half day leave, but I didn't take. I stayed back. What made me do it? Certainly it was God's providence that I was there and I helped the child. When I said it was Jesus that put me there for you, he was surprised and he looked at me. I shared the word of God with him and with his parents. <clears throat> After many years he came back and he met me in school and he thanked me. But then he said, Madam, you told me about Jesus. Whenever I pass a church in Delhi, I always hold my hands and thank God. So amen and praise God for all his glory, for using me as a small instrument in the extension of his kingdom, and for giving me all the respect, the honor, the love of my students. What else more can I ask? All honor and glory to God in heaven. Thank you. Thank you, Ethel. Now I request Sunday school children to leave for their classes. The scripture readings are taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1 to 3. Then second reading from the book of James, chapter 2, verse 26. Third reading from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 36 to 42. I request Ms. Shaini Kusala to read the scripture for us. Hebrew chapter 11, verses 1 to 3. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were recommended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. The second portion is taken from uh, James chapter 2, verse 26. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. The third uh, uh, scripture reading is taken from uh, Acts chapter 9, verse 36 to 42. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lida was near Zopa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lida, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Peter went with them and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and help her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Zopa, and many people believed in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Now I invite Miss Anushik Titus to share the word of God with us. Miss Anushik Titus, please.
Good morning, church. It is so nice to be here in the house of the Lord. I'm thankful to God for, for allowing me to stand over here. Thank you to Pastor. And today, as we look into the word of God, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this time, Lord God. We submit ourselves in your hands, Lord God. Lord, we invite your presence over here. Holy Spirit, we invite you. Not me, Lord, but the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, may speak according to your will, Lord. And Lord, let each one of us be blessed in the way you want us to be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. It is so nice to be present over here and to speak, especially when we, the women of WSCS, are participating. And so today the message that I thought of sharing was on women, the faith that the women had in the Bible. It is so nice as it is written in John chapter 3, verse 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son for whoever believes in him may not perish, but have an everlasting life. What a wonderful God we serve. He has already paid the price for each one of us. He has already taken our sins on the cross of Calvary for us, so that we may receive his joy, happiness, his peace, his deliverance, his abundance, his blessings, and above all, salvation. Jesus has already done that for each one of us. We are so thankful for that. But to receive all these blessings in our life, what do we do? How do we become a part of all these blessings that we know that God has kept for each one of us? For that, as it is written in the book of Hebrew, chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and an evidence of things not seen. It's so wonderful that when we put our trust in the Lord, He connects us to a substance that is very much present in the Bible. That substance is the evidence of something that we have hoped for, imagined, or thought of. That substance of healing, that substance of deliverance, that substance of receiving the power of God, the presence of Holy Spirit in our lives, the presence of God and the peace, that substance which each one of us may have a different hope which we can correlate with, but just believe that that hope is an evidence that there is some substance in the Bible. And when we keep on hoping and believing, that becomes our faith. And that substance comes to existence. That substance is the evidence that God has called us to believe. It is so wonderful that so many women in the Bible lived onto their hope. It was not easy. The situations were different. I would just give a few example of just a few of them. There are so many women in the Bible who expressed their faith, who walked in faith, and they responded to different situations in their life just by being empowered by the presence of God. And that presence of God was their faith, their belief, that substance that they carried within themselves. As it is written in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 31, by faith, the prostitute Rahab became, because she was welcomed, she welcomed the spies and she was not killed because of her faith. She was an Israelite woman. She was not an Israelite woman. I'm so sorry to say that. She was not an Israelite woman, but because of her faith and her trust 
and the thought she, she had for her future that led her to believe and trust of trust in all those things that were going around her all those things were negative but she trusted the lord took a step of faith gave shelter to the spies and she was delivered she was saved and her family was saved her mother father brother sister and her loved ones were saved this is what faith does in our lives maybe sometimes we don't see it happening but just believe that it is there that substance is already there and so wonderful it is that she was added in the genealogy of jesus another example is ruth although being a young widow she showed loyalty faithfulness to naomi she had a chance to go away but she kept on holding on to her faith she kept on believing that god who has created her has a purpose for her life and that purpose was not turning back that purpose made her to move ahead with complete trust in the unseen situations that she was going to land up in and what happened after that her faithfulness to god was rewarded she she was blessed abundantly for her faithfulness for her loyalty and her trust that she put in god and she became a part of god's amazing plan and his genealogy she got married to boaz it was something impossible but yes god made it happen in the book of matthew chapter 1 verse 16 it's mentioned that mary was chosen by god to be his mother the mother of his son our lord and savior jesus christ by the power of holy spirit despite of the political challenges and the societal consequences that she faced she walked in obedience and humility and unwavering faith that demonstrates her character mary had a strong character filled with humility it is a reminder god reminds us that god chooses the humble god chooses the faithful to fulfill his purposes and believe me each one of us seated over here has a purpose in our lives god wants to equip us because god doesn't call the qualified he qualifies the unqualified he doesn't look at our ab uh, our abilities our abilities are nothing in front of god our righteousness is like filthy rags before god but he blesses our availability so let us not despise anything any situation in which god places us just believe that that place that situation that moment is from the lord to lift you up to another level it may look impossible but nothing is impossible for god to be walking in god's presence god's power maybe maybe we won't even realize that we are walking in god's presence i mean this word looks so amazing so wonderful and so unachievable that you know nothing is um, impossible for god and that we are walking in his presence i mean uh, this sentence the statement itself looks so big but just believe that where you are you are in the presence of god you are carrying the peace of god you are carrying that element that substance within you that is the power of god the power of holy spirit is present within you so what kind of faith are we supposed to have in our lives there is something um there is a quantum of faith that we all have but yes um, there is a little standard which we have to keep in our minds when we talk about faith so it's written in james chapter 2 verse 26 as body without spirit is dead so faith without deeds is dead so it's so wonderful god has just given us a little clue that what do we have to do to execute that faith in our lives we just have to believe in god and we have to do those works those works which god has placed in front of us 
in the present situations in our life. It is written in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 2b. If I have faith, that can move mountains. But if I don't have love, I am nothing. What a wonderful thing. God has already demonstrated what love is. Unconditional love that God showed for each one of us because of which we can receive salvation and eternal life. That love God has already given us, that love is a love of humility. Expression of love is nothing but just um, standing for people around you when they need you. Just being available, I think that is also an expression of love. And that is what God wants to empower us with. God wants us to be filled up with the power of your of his Holy Spirit, his love, his faith, and to work according to the situations in the deeds that he has planned for us. For today's passage, I chose the example of Tabitha, and that's why I took this reading from Acts chapter 9, verses 36 to 42. In Joppa, there lived a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. Joppa was a place during, I mean, that place is still there, but Tabitha lived in the port city of Joppa. It is the oldest city in Israel, connecting Jerusalem to the rest of the world. It is a seaport along the Mediterranean Sea and it is not very far away from Tel Aviv. It was a multilingual, multicultural and multi-religious place. Joppa abounded in women and uh, women who were widows. It abounded in widows and orphans because at that place, the men used to go for voyage and unfortunately they would die. So that place was filled with lots of widows and lots of orphans. And Tabitha, the, the second word which catches my attention is that she was a disciple. To be a disciple of Jesus, she showed in her actions. She showed in her love for God. Her faith in Jesus was expressed by what she did for the poor, for these orphans, for the people around her. She was not very nationally recognized woman, um, but still, she did whatever she could do in her place. She was known for good works, and people loved her because she sowed joy, happiness in the lives of all these women by the little talent that God had given her. She was a seamstress, I think, and she used to stitch the robes and clothes for all these women over there and the people over there. It so happened that she became sick and died and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Leda was near Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Leda, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. This, um, this verse 37, it, in verse 37, it's written that when she died, her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room, which makes me to realize that it, her house was a two-storied house. And most probably she uh, was not a very wealthy woman, but she had the resources to be able to see to the needs of all the poor people, of a lot of poor people around her. So when she died, her body was placed in an upstairs room. And how wonderful it is, generally we see, there are so many um, evidences of faith in our um, in the Bible wherein, you know, children died and mother cried for them, prayed for them, and they were raised to life again. There are so many examples like Jairus' daughter died and Jesus prayed and she came back to life. But here what we see is that now Tabitha has died. Now who would pray for her? 
but she was so well recognized in her own community that the widows over there who were standing the believers they didn't want her to be just gone away like that they wanted something miraculous to happen in tabitha's life who was already dead and they believed that it is god who can do something so what did they do they sent two disciples to another city that is lydia to call for peter and i feel so amazed when i read this at the spontaneity of peter i mean he must have got some other agenda some other place to go but it is just being available at that point of time and he turned and he came to joppa when he came over there what did he see he saw that those widows were crying for her they were showing the things that tabitha had done tabitha used to stitch clothes and robes so they showed everything to him and they want they expected something to happen tabitha is a hebrew name and she had two names one was dorcas and tabitha so the people over there knew her by her greek name dorcas but when peter comes over there he addresses her as tabitha dorcas means in greek it means a gazelle that is a deer it shows graciousness how a deer uh, reaches on to high mountains and uh, like in the bible it's written as the deer panteth for water so my soul longeth after thee so her name also signified the kind of faith that she had how she would do things but i'm sure all her doing and actions were not just actions they were all connected and nicely suited with the faith in god that she had so when peter came <coughs> and the widow stood around him showing what she had done it shows that whatever tool we have today in our hands whatever skill we have today let us not despise small little things around us because god uses the most humble and small little things to create his purposes to come to pass in our lives her tool that she had was a little needle or just a just a piece of metal but that she used to bring glory to god it is so wonderful when peter prayed for tabitha peter was taken in the upstairs room and now when he was about to pray he asked all of them to go out of the room it was not peter who brought tabitha back to life it was the power of god present at that moment the presence of holy spirit the helper it was the name of jesus that revived her from the situation in which she was how wonderful it is the name of jesus has the power to turn every dead situation into life once again because jesus has already done it for us on the cross of calvary we don't have to do anything we just have to call on to the name of the lord and he will answer us and show us great and mighty things that he has in store for us because he has a lot of things in store for us which we have not seen we just have to believe by faith when we believe by faith things start unfolding in our lives and the things the way the things unfold is in a way in which we have not imagined so at that moment peter used the gift that god had given him the gift of prayer and where did he learn that from that means that also shows that he had such a close walk with jesus that he learned how to pray for the dead and what he had learned like few chapters back it's written that jesus prayed for jairus's daughter and she came back to life and jesus did exactly the same thing he uh, went in the room closed the door and prayed and and the power of god worked over there peter used the same thing what he had learned he did the same thing he went in he prayed for tabitha I feel amazed when I think of it that how powerful the presence of God must have been at that moment how wonderful that moment must have been when the power of God was called upon 
and God showed his presence, the power of God was manifesting over there and a dead woman came back to life. The way she came back to life also shows and gives an assurance that how much God loves her, how much God loved her, how much God loved the works that she had done. Maybe what sometimes, you know, we do small little things and we uh, don't even consider it of any value. But everything, ev because God is a God who searches our hearts and minds. He blesses the work of our hands. It's uh, written in uh, Proverbs 31, verse 31. Bless the work of her hands. There's so much of power in the work of our hands. Those works God watches and blesses. So that was the work that she had done and the power of God and the presence of God worked over there and Tabitha was brought back to life. So whatever situations we may be in today, let us just surrender our situations to God and God will bring those things to life in our lives. Just believe that because God is a God of transformation. He is a God of redemption. He will redeem us from every situation that we are placed in. Peter just told her, Tabitha, get up. And she opened her eyes and on seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by her hand and helped her on her feet. He called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. What an awesome moment it must have been when Peter gave his hand to her. All her life, she gave her hand to others to help her. And here, when it was her time of need, it was God who sent Peter over there to help her. The power of God can work in any way, in any place. So let us believe in the work of our God, in the work of God in our lives. When God could bring Tabitha to life, God is ready to bring anything in our life which is not working according to his will, any situation, any moment, any kind of deliverance that we are waiting for, any kind of healing, but God is there to heal us and to deliver us. Let us see what are the gifts that we have in our hands, what are the talents that we have, and let us surrender them to our Lord, because he will multiply it for us. Jesus is not on the cross now, he is alive. He is working in our lives, redeeming us from everything, every situation. Let us now look at the three things that happened over there. God gave a gift to Tabitha. She used it well for the expansion of his kingdom. God gave a gift to Peter and he used it well for the expansion of God's kingdom because after Tabitha came to life, there was a revival over there in Joppa as well as in other cities because this became a news over there that a lady was raised from dead. Let us honor all the women who do something with their hands. They have done because not knowingly but believe that God has already blessed them. Whatever challenges we face, like Sarah, she faced a dead situation, but that dead situation was brought to life. Her barrenness, she didn't bear a child for so many years, but yes, when she bore a child, it was God's presence in her life. Raha prepared for future, not knowing what she's going to do, and Ruth responded to the situation which was completely negative. Today, let us see what are the things that are differently placed in our lives and we are most probably finding it difficult to connect with those things. Just let us surrender those things to God 
and God will make it to come to pass in our lives in the most beautiful manner. It will unfold in our lives which we cannot even imagine. When we experience a revival in our life, we become a new creation. Our bad attitudes change. Our situations change. When we submit everything to God, so today, as we go from here, let us see what are the things that we need to submit to God and ask for his revival to come in those situations. When we ask the Lord to bless us, he will bless, bless us and multiply us in the way he wants us to be multiplied. So I would just pray that today we submit our situations, our lives in his hands and he will redeem us and make us a new creation. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for this time, Lord. Whatever we have heard, Lord, let it be a blessing to each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Ms. Anushik for sharing with us very relevant and enriching message. Thank you. Now I request congregation to rise and sing a hymn of commitment number 467, Trust and Obey. While we sing, offering will be received.
shall we receive the benediction of God. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, love of the Father and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and for evermore. Now I invite Mr. Elvis Joseph to share the important announcements with us. Morning church, it's good to be back. We welcome you all, please join us at the Parsonage for the time of fellowship. Uh, before we start with the other announcements, I would thank the entire WSCS team for the uh, service they conducted today morning. So congratulations on the uh, entire choir team, it was very good and especially the message from Anushikta. Uh, I congratulate the whole team. Uh, if any one of you who is worshipping with us for the first time, I would request you to kindly get up and introduce yourself so that we can welcome you. So we we'll move on, uh, the regular announcements and uh, every Wednesday we have the congregational intercessory prayer time 7 to 8 p.m. online. The congregation is encouraged to join in this prayer time. If you have any prayer requests, kindly share it with Pastor or Reverend George Money. If any of the congregation member requests for a cottage prayer meeting during the Lent season, you may kindly contact the pastor or the church office. Every Thursday, we have the Lent prayer meeting in the century, 7 to 8 p.m. It is also online. The Sunday School Annual Picnic is today after the service, that is 17th March 2024. The parents are requested to kindly ensure that the children are present. Uh, there is another request which has been made uh, by the Sunday School team. We need some volunteers who can pick up children from the church, drop them to the Sunda nursery and uh, we will be back at 1.30. So we'll require them to again pick them up from the Sunda nursery at about 1.30 and bring them back to the church. So we require some volunteers uh, during the fellowship time at the parsonage. Uh, if you can assist us in that, it will be a great help. <coughs> the church souvenir will be released on 31st of March 2023, that is on Easter. Uh, please share your family greetings, article, images. I would also request the head of the auxiliary committees to kindly share your articles along with pictures as early as possible. Uh, there's hardly any time left. As we are also coming to the end of the financial year for this uh, year, uh, the commitments which are there with the congregational members, I would request you to kindly complete them so that the church records can be effectively updated. The church website has been continuously updated. You can also obtain the updates from there. The tithes, pledges, thanksgivings can also be paid through the electronic media with a small message to Jacob so that the records can be updated. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Elvis. We are grateful and thankful for the women of our church for their participation and commitment towards church ministry. Let's spend some moments in silence and prayer to thank God Almighty for the wonderful things he does for us. Thank you. <laughs> 